9.2 is about polar graphs and derivatives. And we've talked a little about, we've reviewed polar coordinates, how every coordinate is r comma theta. We've talked about the conversions back to a rectangular world. And what we're gonna do in this lesson is we're gonna focus on how do I graph a polar function in polar? And how do I translate it into a rectangular equation? And then we're gonna build on that a little bit and we're gonna add the calculus in how do I take the derivative of a polar equation or a polar function. And this is going to tie right back to the idea of dealing with parametric. So this box up top that has a lot of review information about how to sketch your polar graph is really just there to help you remember what's going on with different kind of polar equations. So when you see something like a number cosine theta, that you know that that's a circle and d is the diameter of the circle. When you see something like a cosine of n theta, you know that that's a rose petal curve and you can determine how many petals there are. Um, when you see something like r plus r equals a plus b cosine of theta, you know that that's a limicon. Limicon? Limacon? I'm not really sure how to say that. You know what that looks like and about its basic symmetry. Most of the problems that you're gonna see that involve polar graphs are either gonna be on the calculator portion of the AP exam, or it's going to be something where you are not expected to graph a detailed polar graph. So really what we need to know is how to efficiently deal with these graphs and how to sketch out what's going on, mostly so that we can do the calculus portion, which is identifying intersections and which portions were dealing with for derivative and area and things like that. So let's go ahead and jump into this example below. Let's graph one of these problems by hand. We're going to graph r equals 4 cosine of theta, which is going to be, looking at this, a circle that has x-axis symmetry, meaning I could fold it along the x-axis and things would line up. So go ahead and pause the video. You should know what 4 times cosine of 0, cosine of pi over 4, pi over 2. You should be able to fill this in pretty efficiently just using basic unit circle knowledge. So hopefully you've had time to fill in that table, and you can go ahead and graph those points as well. And your graph should look something like this. Now what if we wanted to convert this into a rectangular coordinates. What would, if r is 4 cosine of theta, what is x and what is y? So remember that x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta. So x in this case would be 4 cosine of theta times cosine of theta or 4 cosine squared theta. And y in this case would be 4 cosine theta sine of theta. By converting to rectangular, we can almost think of what we just did as creating a parametric equation, which would help us to find derivatives, which is what we're going to do on the back of these sections of notes. So I want you to grab your graphing calculator. I want you to make sure that it is in polar mode. And go ahead and type in this first equation, r equals 3 minus 3 sine of theta. And you can go into your window and you can change it to make sure that it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then go ahead and sketch what you're seeing on your graph below. So here's a quick sketch of what that graph would look like. And then let's go ahead and write x out now that we know what r is. So x is r cosine theta. So that's going to be 3 minus 3 sine of theta times cosine of theta. And y is going to be 3 minus 3 sine theta, that's my r, times sine of theta. And next what I want you to do is to, while you're on the graph on your graphing calculator, go ahead and hit second trace. So hit second trace, so on your graph. and we're doing this for our calculator. Hit second trace, and then there's a button that says dy dx. Once you hit enter, that'll take you back to the main screen of your graph, and then you're gonna type in pi over eight. So second up arrow to get pi divided by eight, hit enter, and that will give you the value of the derivative at pi over eight, at theta equals pi over eight. So this is negative 0.198 is our value there. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing on number four. Pause the video, sketch the graph, find your x and y, and then do the dy dx part on your own. 
So here's a rough sketch of that graph. Here's my X and my Y values. And then if we find, if we find dy dx at theta equals five pi over six, we're gonna get 1.732. And then go ahead and pause the video and do the last one. Here's a rough sketch for number three. It's like a little sideways heart with a little inner loop. X equals two minus three cosine theta times cosine theta. Y equals two minus three cosine theta times sine theta. If we use our calculator to hit dy dx of pi over two, we get negative 1.5. So again, you're not gonna be expected to do really thorough deta detailed graphs on these. We are going to either be looking at a graph or creating a graph for the sole purpose of helping us understand what's going on with the calculus part of the math. So let's get to that. Let's start talking about the calculus. Since polar behaves in a similar way, if we're talking about x and y, as a parametric equation, we can think of the derivative in, this, in the same way. To find dy dx with parametrics, we found dy dt, we found dx dt, and we divided them. Similarly here with polar, to find dy dx, we can find dy d theta and divide that by dx d theta. Same process, but just now in a polar world. So let's go ahead and look at the first example. We're gonna find, we need to find x and y first since this equation is given in terms of r. So we're gonna find x, we're gonna find y, then we're gonna find dx dt, sorry, dx d theta and dy d theta. And then we're gonna work from there. So let's go ahead and find out what x is. x, oops, x is going to be two minus two sine of theta times cosine of theta, which is two cosine theta minus two sine theta, cosine theta. So now I can take the derivative dx d theta which is going to be negative two sine of theta minus two cosine squared theta. We're using the product rule here, plus two sine squared theta. And if you need to show an extra step in there, that's totally fine. Now let's go ahead and find dy d theta. So y is going to equal r times sine of theta, so two sine of theta minus two sine squared of theta. Then we're gonna take the derivative of that with respect to theta. dy d theta is going to be two cosine of theta minus four sine theta cosine theta. So the order pair that we have been given on this problem is currently in terms of r and theta. In order to find the equation of a tangent line, we need to know what theta value we're plugging into each of our derivatives. So from this, we can identify that we're gonna evaluate each of these at theta equals zero. And I could have written them, and I still can, as dy dx equals this whole yuckiness. So much going on here divided by my dx d theta. I'm running out of space here. But I'm just gonna evaluate each, the numerator and the denominator separately for theta equals zero, and then I can find my, DX, my dy dx. So over here, if theta is zero, everything with sine is gonna go to zero, everything with cosine is gonna go to one, so this is just gonna leave us with negative two. Over here, when theta is zero, everything with sine is gonna go to zero. So this is gonna be two cosine of zero, which is gonna give us two. So really, dy dx is going to be two divided by negative two, which is negative one. So all of this work, just to get the slope of our tangent line, now we need to find the x and y value so that we can write the equation of our line. So we found our slope, we have information about x and we have information about y, so we need to plug in the point r equals two, theta equals zero to figure out what our x and our y are. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do that in green. So x, x is equal to two minus two times sine of zero times cosine of zero. Well, sine of zero is zero, so this is gonna be two times cosine of zero, which is just gonna be two. So the x value of our point is two. 
y is going to be 2 sine of 0, which is 0, minus 4 sine of 0, cosine of 0, which is also 0. So y is going to be 0. So the equation of our line, y minus 0, equals our slope times x minus 2. And there is the equation of my tangent line. So let's recap what we did in this section. To find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of r equals 2 minus 2 sine of theta, what we first needed to do was define x and y, x being r cosine theta, y being r sine of theta. Define x and y, take the derivative dx d theta and dy d theta so that we could find dy dx and evaluate that when theta equals 0 and we knew that theta was equal to 0 because of the ordered pair that they gave us at the beginning, r comma theta. Once we did that, we had our slope, our dy dx. We needed to find our ordered pair, so we used the information from the ordered pair to 0, plugged that into our x equals and y equals equations to find the rectangular point that coordinates, and then we plugged that in and wrote the equation of our line. I'm going to erase all this, and then we're going to jump into number 4. So go ahead and graph on your graphing calculator r equals 2 minus 2 cosine of theta, and then sketch what you see on the polar graph below number four. So here is my sketch of the graph. And then let's go ahead and look at vertical tangents. When do vertical tangents happen? They happen when the denominator of the derivative is zero. So we need, and I'm just gonna note this down here, vertical tangents, denominator of dy dx is equal to zero. Well, in that case, we're really just going to be talking about dx d theta. We need to know when does dx d theta equal 0. So that's what we're going to do first for our vertical tangents. So let's define x. x is going to be 2 cosine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta, which means dx d theta is going to be negative sine of theta plus 4 cosine theta sine of theta. And we want to know where this is equal to 0. So we're going to go back to algebra here. We're going to factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is negative 2 sine of theta. That's going to leave me with 1 minus 2 cosine of theta. And we're going to ask ourselves, wh where do each of these equal 0? This is going to be 0 when theta equals 0, pi, 2 pi, etc. This is really where is cosine of theta 1 half if I solve for cosine. And that happens at theta equals pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, etc. Now using this information that we just found, let's go ahead and look at our graph and see what's happening. At Theta equals zero, there is no vertical tangent here. If I drew a vertical line, it's gonna hit other parts of this graph. And that's because there's a cusp. There's a cusp, so it is undefined there. The derivative is undefined there, but it's not zero. So we will have a vertical tangent line over here. So I'm gonna vertical tangents. And what would that ordered pair be? That's when theta is pi. And what is r when theta is pi? 2 minus 2 cosine of pi. r is going to be 4. There's also a vertical tangent here and here. That's at theta equals pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And what is r there? r, if we are looking at pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3, r is going to be 1. So there are our vertical tangents. So what did we do for vertical tangents? We looked at x, we defined x, we found dx d theta, we looked where dx d theta was zero, and we looked at the graph to confirm that zero, when theta is zero, is not going to be a tangent, there's no tangent line there because it is a cusp. Now, let's do the same basic process for dy d theta. So horizontal tangents happen when dy d theta is equal to 0, when the numerator of our derivative is equal to 0. So go ahead and define y and then find dy d theta. So y is going to equal 2 sine of theta minus 2 cosine theta sine theta. When we take the derivative, dy d theta is going to be 2 cosine of theta minus 2 cosine squared theta, we're using the product rule here, plus 2 sine squared theta 
Now my ultimate goal is to figure out where this, I'm gonna make some more room for myself, where this is equal to zero. So I need to do a little bit of substitution here. I wanna get everything in terms of cosine so that I can actually solve. So let's actually take this ooh, up top so that I have some more space up here. So I'm gonna divide everything by two and I'm gonna substitute where it says sine squared one minus cosine squared of theta. So zero equals cosine of theta minus cosine squared of theta plus one minus cosine squared of theta. Actually, this part is the green part that I'm substituting. So I divided by two on both sides, and then I substituted in one minus cosine squared when there were, where there was a sine squared. This now becomes a factorable expression. So let's actually, I'm gonna divide everything by negative one here and combine like terms. So two cosine squared theta, if I combine these guys, minus cosine of theta minus one, equals zero, and I can factor this. Two cosine of theta plus one, cosine of theta minus one. So what we're asking ourselves here is what makes cosine of theta negative one half and what makes cosine of theta one. And those theta values are going to be zero, which we already said is a cusp, so that we have an issue there. Also two pi over three and four pi over three. So let's bring those down here. So if we have theta is two pi over three and we have theta is four pi over three, and then we can go ahead and find our R value by plugging two pi over three in to R equals two minus two cosine theta. For both of those, our R value is going to be three. And that should make sense if I move my graph back over. It does appear that we have a horizontal tangent here and here. So I know it's a lot of work and a lot of managing with trig, but the actual calculus that we're doing is really just taking derivatives, setting those derivatives equal to zero. I know there's some more trig work happening here, knowing where a cosine of something is one half or zero and working through that, but you just need to practice and get more comfortable with it. All right, let's go ahead and look at number five. Why don't you pause the video, graph r equals 1.5 theta cosine theta on your calculator, and then sketch that graph on the graph below. So here's my very rough sketch below. Part A says find the greatest distance from any point on the curve to the pole. And then it gives us a nice hint here. Find the absolute max of dr d theta. So the first thing we need to do is find dr d theta and set it equal to zero so that we can find our critical values. We will also need to check the endpoints 0 and 1.5 pi as possible candidates. So let's go ahead and find dr d theta. So dr d theta is going to equal 1.5 cosine of theta minus 1.5 theta sine of theta, just using the product rule. We wanna know where this is zero and we're gonna do this part on our calculator as well. We're looking for where dr d theta is equal to zero. So grab your calculator. So I know we're working with polar, but since all we care about is where the derivative is equal to zero, go ahead and switch the mode back into function mode. Go into y equals in your calculator, type 1.5 x cosine x, and then on the second y equals line, if you hit second math and go down to derivative, you can type d dx, and it hit alpha trace, you can get y1 in there, and then when x equals x. And on your graph, just go ahead and just graph y2, your derivative. So let me write what I just said. So again, y1 is gonna be 1.5 theta cosine theta, y2 is gonna be the derivative of y1 when x equals x, and then go ahead and just graph y, y2, which is the derivative of y1. Then, once your graph is there, hit second trace, and find the zeros. So second trace down to two. I can tell since we're looking from zero to 1.5 pi, I'm ignoring all the zeros on the left-hand side of the y-axis. I can see that there's gonna be one somewhere between zero and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and then I'm gonna type two as my right bound. 
and then hit enter again, and that's gonna give me that my first x or theta value is 0.860. I'm gonna do that same thing again. So second trace zero. I'm gonna look from one, so x equals one, to x equals five. It looks like it's going above the axis somewhere between there, and then I'm gonna hit yes for, or enter for guess. And that's going to give you me my second theta value, which is 3.425. So my candidates are going to be these two values, also 0 and 1.5 pi. So I'm going to just set up a little table for my candidates. So here's my table. How do I find my r values? If I want to know what r is when theta is each of these numbers, I'm plugging that into this top equation, which you can do by hand or you can have your graph and calculator do. So if you go back into your y equals menu and you check off y1 and then you hit second graph, that takes you to the table. So if I hit zero, I see that my y1 is going to be zero. That means my radius is zero. If I hit 0.86, I get 0.841. If I hit 3.425, I get negative 0.493, three. And if I hit 1.5 pi, I get zero. Now whether or not r is positive or negative is just telling you which direction away from the pole it's going. So it doesn't matter that negative, that 4.932 is negative. That is still going to be the, the furthest we ever are from the pole. So the answer to part A, is that the greatest distance, which means absolute value anyways, is 4.932 units. All right, let's go ahead now and look at part B. Part B says, at a point where dy d theta equals 1 half, the slope of the tangent line is 2 over 2 minus pi. What is dx d theta? So let's give ourselves a little more room first. Let me go ahead and rewrite what they're telling me. So I know that dy d theta is equal to 1 half, and I know that the slope of the tangent line, aka dy dx, is equal to 2 over 2 minus pi. Well, how do we find dy dx? We take dy d theta, and we divide it by the thing that this question is asking us to find, dx d theta. So let's substitute in what we know. dy dx is 2 over 2 minus pi. dy d theta is 1 half. And we're looking for dx d theta. So we can go ahead and just cross multiply here. 2 times dx d theta is going to be equal to 1 half times 2 minus pi. So dx d theta is 1 fourth times 2 minus pi. And I'm going to leave it just like that. So it's possible that you might be given, this is a very abstract problem, it's really assessing that you understand the idea of how to find dy dx using the different pieces. So this is a great problem to push you a little bit to make sure you understand what's going on with our setups. So let's go ahead and look at our last two questions. So go ahead and grab your graphing calculator and graph switch back to polar mode and graph r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta and r equals 4 cosine theta and sketch that graph on part a below. And again, this is a rough sketch, so nothing in super detail, but it kind of gives you, helps you get an idea of how many times it looks like it should cross, even though I sort of have a terrible sketch here. It looks like it could cross a couple of times. Let's do the math to actually decide how many times and where it does in, in fact cross. Where are the intersection points? And the reason that we're ending with this is because we are going to, in our next lesson, be finding the area. So we need to be able to find points of intersection. It's a really import con important concept moving forward. So let's go ahead and solve this. So I'm going to move 4 cosine theta to the other side, so 2 minus 2 cosine theta equals 0, so cosine of theta equals 1. This is true at theta equals 0 and 2 pi. So we can plug that back in. r equals 4 times cosine of 0, which is going to be 4. So one solution is going to be 4, 0. If we plug in 2 pi, 
r equals 4 cosine of 2 pi, which is going to also give me 4. So there are the two places that these two graphs intersect. Last but not least, 6b, go ahead and pause the video, graph those two polar equations, and sketch your graph on the graph provided. Again, just a rough sketch to get an idea of what's going on here. So we're looking for where does sine theta equal sine of 2 theta? So 0, I'm going to subtract sine of theta from both sides. I can substitute in here. I can use the double angle property here to get 2 cosine theta sine theta minus the sine theta that was there. I can factor out a sine theta. 2 cosine theta minus 1. So we're looking for where does sine of theta equal 0 and where does cosine of theta equal 1 half. And this is going to happen when theta is 0 or pi for the sine portion and the cosine portion when theta is pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So we have a bunch of theta values and now we just need to plug those into either of our equations. This r equals sine of theta is probably going to be easier. So if theta is 0, r is 0. If theta is pi, r is 0. If theta is pi over 3, ooh, I did not save myself enough room there. If theta is pi over 3, r is root 3 over 2. And if theta is 5 pi over 3, r is negative root 3 over 2. So these two equations, or these two polar equations, actually cross in four different places. So key ideas from this section. First of all, being able to sketch a graph of a polar function on your calculator and potentially by hand, but really for the most part, you're going to be either looking at a graph that's given to you or sketching them on your graph and calculator. You still need to be able to convert to rectangular coordinates for x and y, you should be able to use your calculator to evaluate dy dx at an indicated value. And then you should be able to take the derivative dy dx, meaning that you need to find dy d theta and divide that by dx d theta. Everything after that was really just application from previous units. So finding intersection points, finding horizontal and vertical tangents, maximizing the distance, all of that really is review from previous units. So if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down and I look forward to supporting you on this in class. Thanks for listening.